Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books where we have an opportunity to associate with Srila Prabhupada every day as he's told us all the time he was with us that he's present in the sound. He, he dictated these books through a dictaphone and then they were transcribed and then edited and then published and the sound, it's his sound. So we associate with him by associating with this sound. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> okay, Sanatana Goswami in the line. We are in the line of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami is the senior member of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and therefore the senior disciple of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was highly educated both materially and spiritually. He knew all kinds of languages and he was a high guy and a chief minister of a big part of India under the Nawab Hussein Shah at the time of the Muslim government. And he gave it all up, became a mendicant, and then he started to, then he heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu two months straight, 24-7. Well, I don't know if it was actually 24-7, but every single day for 20 days, or two months actually, two months. And that's the most time he spent instructing any one person. And we got the Briya Bhagavatamrita as a result of that, and all sorts of other wonderful commentaries and wonderful Shastra, Vaishnava Toshini commentary of Srimad Bhagavatam. But we also got the Krishna Lila Stava, Sri Krishna Lila Stava, which is a very simple, vocative Sanskrit book glorifying the different pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan, ending with the killing of Kangsa. And he, his, his idea was to offer a 108 obeisances to the um, Rajalila of Krishna. And this is the 107th obeisance, which we read every day in order to prepare our consciousness and help us go deeper into what we're doing. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram and it goes like this. Sarva Shabdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Radnaya Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandavidaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Barshaksharaya Te, Sarvada Sarvatevaya, Shri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of Prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madhika bando mat sanghin, mat guru man mahadana, man nisadaga mat bhagya, mat ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin. Ati nicho chachakada, Hanamun chakada chinmam, Prem narit kanta yospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So here we are 
In the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, finally after nine cantos and a whole bunch of pages and a whole bunch of chapters, you know there's 335 chapters in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 335 chapters. And out of those, 90 chapters Krishna gets. He's definitely the man. <laughs> he be the man of the Bhagavatam. Okay? And I think we left off at 27. Yes. <clears throat> the demigods are coming to pray to Krishna while he's in, still in the womb of Devaki. And as you might well be aware, the basic philosophy, spiritual philosophy, is being uh, elaborated upon. Uh, by the demigods in their prayers, as it is, as they are in every part of the Bhagavatam, the basics are all the way through the Bhagavatam. They, they never get left behind. There are devotees who, after so many years, they think they need the higher topics, but they leave the basics behind. But the Bhagavatam doesn't leave the basics behind ever. When we get to the end of the tenth canto. <coughs> After all the pastimes of Krishna, including the Rasa Leela, including all the killing of the demons, you know, and his final departure, you know, the, the personified Vedas, the personified Vedas, they're the court of Lord Brahma. They're the advisors of Lord Brahma for, the whole un for managing the whole universe. Huh? And their prayers are all about the basics of spiritual life, the basics of Krishna consciousness. So it's, we're in esteemed company. Canto 10, Chapter 2, beginning with text 27. The body, the total body and the individual body are of the same composition, may figuratively be called the original tree. From this tree, which fully depends on the ground of material nature, come two kinds of fruit, the enjoyment of happiness and the suffering of distress. The cause of the tree forming its three roots is association with the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. The fruits of bodily happiness have four tastes, religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, <clears throat> and liberation, which are experienced through five senses for acquiring knowledge in the midst of six circumstances. Lamentation, illusion, old age, death, hunger, and thirst. That's what we're doing in this material world. That's all we're doing practically. The seven layers of bark covering the tree are skin, blood, muscle, fat, bone, marrow, and semen. And the eight branches of the tree <coughs> are the five gross and three subtle elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. The tree of the body has nine hollows, the eyes, the ten airs passing through the body, Oh, the, the eyes, the ears, the nostrils, the mouth, the rectum, and the genitals. And ten leaves, the air, ten airs passing through the body. In this tree of the body there are two birds. One is the individual soul, and the other is the super soul, purport. This material world is composed of five principal elements. Earth, water, fi fire, air, and ether all of which are emanations from Krishna. Although materialistic scientists may accept these five primary elements as the cause of the material manifestation, these elements in their gross and subtle states are produced by Krishna, whose marginal potency also produces the living entities working within this material world. The seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita clearly states that the entire cosmic manifestation is a combination of two of Krishna's energies, the superior energy 
and the inferior energy. The living entities are the superior energy <coughs> and the inanimate material elements are his inferior energy. In the dormant stage, everything rests in Krishna. Material scientists cannot give such a thorough analysis of the material structure of the body. The analysis of the material scientist concerns itself only with inanimate matter. But this is inadequate because the living entity is completely separate from the material bodily structure. In the Bhagavad Gita 7.5, the Lord says, <coughs> Apariham itastvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhutam mahabaho yayidam daryate jagat Besides the inferior in nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mind which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material inferior nature. Although the material elements emanate from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they are separated elements and are sustained by the living elements. As indicated by the word Dvi Kaga, the living elements within the body resemble two birds in a tree. Ka means sky and Ga means one who flies. Thus the word Dvi Kaga refers to birds. In the tree of the body there are two birds or two living elements and they are always different. In the Bhagavad Gita 13.3 the Lord says Chetragyam Chapi Mam Bidi Sarva Chetreshu Bharata O scion of Bharata, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies. The Chetragya, the individual knower of the body, is <coughs> also called the Kaga, the living entity. Within the body there are two such Chetragyas, the individual soul and the super soul. The individual soul is the knower of his individual body, but the super soul is present within the bodies of all living entities. Such a thorough analysis and understanding of the bodily structure cannot be obtained anywhere but in the Vedic literature. When two birds enter a tree, one may foolishly think that the birds become one or merge with the tree, but actually they do not. Rather, each bird keeps its individual identity. Similarly, the individual soul and the super soul do not become one, nor do they merge with matter. The living entity lives close to matter, but this does not mean that he merges or mixes with it. Asango yayam purusha. Although material scientists mistakenly see the organic and inorganic, or animate and inanimate, to be mixed. Vedic knowledge has been kept imprisoned or concealed, but every human being needs to understand it in truth. The modern civilization of ignorance is simply engaged in analyzing the body, and thus people come to the erroneous conclusion that the living force within the body is generated under certain material conditions. People have no information of the soul but this verse gives the perfect explanation that there are two living forces, dvi kaga, the individual soul and the super soul. The super soul is present in everybody, Ishwara, sarvabhutanam, riddhishar junatishtati, whereas the individual soul is situated only in his own body, dehi, and is transmigrating from one body to another. Text 28. The efficient cause of this material world manifested with its many varieties as the original tree is you, O Lord. You are also the maintainer of this material world and after annihilation you are one, the one in whom everything is conserved. Those who are covered by your external energy cannot see you behind this manifestation but theirs is not the vision of learned devotees. Purport. Various demigods 
beginning with Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and even Vishnu are supposed to be the creator, maintainer and annihilator of this material world. But actually, they are not. The fact is that everything is the Supreme Personality of Godhead manifested in varieties of energy. Ekam, Eva, Dviti, Yam, Brahma. There is no second existence. Those who are truly vipaschit, learned, are those who have reached the platform of understanding and observing the Supreme Personality of Godhead in any condition of life. Premanjana, Chudita Bhakti Bilochanena, Santak Sadaiva Vidyeshu Vilokajanti. Learned scholars, Brahma Samhita 538. Learned, scholar, learned devotees accept even conditions of distress as representing the presence of the Supreme Lord. When a devotee is in distress, he sees that the Lord has appeared as distress just to relieve or purify the devotee from the contamination of the material world. While one is within this material world, one is in various conditions, and therefore a devotee sees a condition of distress as but another feature of the Lord. Tate nukam pam susya mikshyamana Bhagavatam 10.14.8 A devotee, therefore, regards distress as a great favor of the Lord because he understands that he is being cleansed of contamination. Tesham aham samudartha mrityu sangsara sagarat Bhagavad Gita 12.7 The appearance of distress is a negative process intended to give the devotee relief from this material world, which is called mrityu samsara, or the constant repetition of birth and death. To save a sur surrendered soul from repeated birth and death, the Lord purifies him of contamination by offering him a little distress. This cannot be understood by a non-devotee. But a devotee can see this because he is vipaschit, or learned. A non-devotee, therefore, is perturbed in distress, but a devotee welcomes distress as another feature of the Lord. Sarvam Kalidam Brahma. A devotee can actually see that there is only the Supreme Personality of Godhead and no second entity. Ekam Eva Vitiyam there is only the Lord who presents himself in different energies. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Persons who are not in real knowledge think that Brahma is the creator, Vishnu the maintainer, and Shiva the annihilator, and that the different demigods are intended to fulfill diverse purposes. Thus they create diverse purposes and worship various demigods to have their pur these purposes fulfilled. Kamais, Taistai, Ritigyana, Prapadyan, Tain, Yadevata. A devotee, however, knows that these various demigods are but different parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that these parts need not be worshipped. As the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 9.23, Ye Pyanya Devata Bhakta Yajante shadayan vitaha tepimam evakonteya yajanta vidipura vakam. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. There is no need to worship the demigods, for this is avidi, not in order. Simply by surrendering oneself at the lotus feet of Krishna, one can completely discharge one's duties. There is no need to worship various deities or demigods. These various divinities are observed by the mudhas, fools, who are bewildered by the three modes of material nature, tribir, gunamayar, bhavayar, eibik, sarvamidam jagat. 
Such fools cannot understand that the real source of everything is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mohitam na bijanati mamme vyak paramavyayam. Not being disturbed by the Lord's various features, one should concentrate upon and worship the Supreme Lord, Mamikam Shandam Baja. This should be the guiding principle of one's life. Text 29. O Lord, you are always in full knowledge, and to bring all good fortune to all living entities, you appear in different incarnations, all of them transcendental to the material creation. When you appear in these incarnations, you are pleasing to the pious and religious devotees, but for non-devotees, you are the annihilator. Purport. This verse explains why the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears as an incarnation again and again. The incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead all function differently. But their main purpose is puritranaya, sadhunam, vinashaya, chadusvitam, to protect the devotees and annihilate the miscreants. Yet even though the duskritis or miscreants are annihilated, <coughs> this is ultimately good for them. Text 30 <clears throat> O lotus-eyed Lord, by concentrating one's meditation on your lotus feet, which are the reservoir of all existence, and by accepting those lotus feet as the boat by which to cross the ocean of nations, one follows in the footsteps of Mahajanas, great saints, sages, and devotees. By this simple process, one can cross the ocean of nations as easily as one steps over the hoofprint of a calf. Purport. The true mission of life is to cross the ocean of nations, of repeated birth and death. Those in the darkness of ignorance, however, do not know this mission. Instead, being carried away by the waves of material nature, prakriti, kriyamanani, gunai karmani sarvashaha, they are undergoing the tribulations of mrityu, samsara, vartmani, repeated birth and death. But a person who has achieved knowledge by the association of devotees follows the Mahajanas, Mahatkritena. Such a person always concentrates his mind upon the lotus feet of the Lord and executes one or more of the nine varieties of devotional service, Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam. Simply by this process, <clears throat> one can cross the insurmountable ocean of nations. Devotional service is powerful in any form. Sri Vishnu Shavane Parikshid Abhavad Bhayasaki Kirtane Bhakti Prasambhari Sindhu 12265 <clears throat> According to this verse, Maharaj Parikshit became liberated by fully concentrating his mind on hearing the Lord's holy name, liberated by uh, attributes and pastimes. I'll read, I'll read that again. According to this verse, Maharaj Parikshit became liberated by fully concentrating his mind on hearing the Lord's holy name, attributes, and pastimes. Similarly, Shukadeva Goswami simply glorified the Lord and by speaking on the subject matters of Krishna that constitute the entire Srimad Bhagavatam, he too was liberated. One may be liberated simply by Sakya, friendly behavior with the Lord. Such is the power of devotional service, as we learn from the example set by the Lord's many pure devotees. Swayambhur naradakshambhu kumara kapilo manuhu prlado janako bhishmo balir bhayasikir bhayam We have to follow in the footsteps of such devotees. <clears throat> For by this one easy process, one can cross the great ocean of nations, just as one might cross a small hole created by the hoof of a calf. Here the Lord is described as Ambujaksha, or lotus-eyed. By seeing the eyes of the Lord, 
which are compared to lotus flowers, one becomes so satisfied that one does not want to turn his eyes to anything else. Simply by seeing the transcendental form of the Lord, the devotee is at once fully absorbed in the Lord in his heart. This absorption is called samadhi. Jnana vasti tatadgatena manasa pashantiyam yoginaha Bhagavatam 12.13.1 A yogi is fully absorbed in thoughts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for he has no other business than to think of the Lord always within the heart. It is also said, Samasrita ye padapalava plavam mahat padam punya yasho mararehe bhavambu dir vatsa padam param padam 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 yad vipadam nate sham. For one who has accepted the boat of the lotus feet of the Lord, who is the shelter of the cosmic manifestation and is famous as Murari, <coughs> the enemy of the demon, demon Mura. The ocean of the material world is like the water contained in a calf's hoof print. His goal is Param Padam, or Vaikuntha, the place where there are no material miseries, not the place where there is danger at every step. Bhagavatam 10.14.58 this process is recommended here by authorities like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, Swayambur, Narada, Shambhu. And therefore we must take to this process in order to transcend nations. This is very easy, but we must follow in the footsteps of great personalities, and then success will be possible. In regard to the word Mahat Kritena, it is also significant that the process shown by great devotees is not exclusively for them, but is also for others. If things are made easy, this affords facility for the person who has made them easy, and also for those who follow the same principles. The process recommended in this verse for crossing the ocean of nations is easy not only for the devotee, but also for common persons who follow the devotee, Mahajano, Yenikata, Sapanta. Text 31 O Lord, who resemble the shining sun, you are always ready to fulfill the desire of your devotee, and therefore you are known as a desire tree, Bancha Kalpataru. When Acharyas completely take shelter under your lotus feet in order to cross the fierce ocean of nations. They leave behind on earth the method by which they cross. And because you are very merciful to your other devotees, you accept this method to help them. Purport. This statement reveals how the merciful Acharyas and the merciful Supreme Personality of God had together help the serious devotee who wants to return home, back to Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his teachings to Rupa Goswami, said, Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagivan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasari Poi Bhakti Lata Bij. C.C. Madhya 19, 151 One can achieve the seed of Bhakti Lata, devotional service by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. The duty of the Guru is to find the means, according to the time, the circumstances, and the candidate, by which one can be induced to render devotional service, which Krishna accepts from a candidate who wants to be successful in going back home, back to Godhead. After wandering throughout the universe, a fortunate person within this material world seeks shelter of such a Guru or Acharya, who trains the devotee in the suitable ways to render service according to the circumstances so that the Supreme Personality of Godhead will accept the service. This makes it easier for the candidate to reach the ultimate destination. The Acharya's duty, therefore, is to find the means by which devotees may render service according to references from Shastra. 
Rupa Goswami, for example, in order to help subsequent devotees, published such devotional books as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. This is the duty of the Acharya to publish books that will help future candidates take up the method of service and become eligible to return home back to Godhead by the mercy of the Lord. Books include audio books in this time and circumstance. Jai. And this reading that's going out all over the world and is being archived is also books, publication of books. Mm -hmm. I had that realization the other day when I was reading, recording in the morning. It was so clear. Okay. <clears throat> in our Christian consciousness movement, the same path is being prescribed and followed. Thus the devotees have been advised to refrain from four sinful activities, illicit sex, intoxication, meat-eating, and gambling, and to chant 16 rounds a day. These are bona fide instructions, because in the Western countries, constant chanting is not possible. One should not artificially imitate Haridas Thakur, but should follow this method. Krishna will accept a devotee who strictly follows the regulated principles and the method prescribed in the various books and literatures published by the authorities. The Acharya gives a suitable method for crossing the ocean of nations by accepting the boat of the Lord's lotus feet. And if this method is strictly followed, the followers will ultimately reach the destination by the grace of the Lord. This method is called Acharya Sampradaya. It is therefore said Sampradaya vihina ye mantras te, te nishpala mataha. Padma Purana. The Acharya Sampradaya is strictly bona fide. Therefore, one must accept the Acharya Sampradaya. Otherwise, one's endeavor will be futile. Chilinaratam Das Thakur therefore sings. Tandera charana sevi bhakta vani Janami janami hoya e amilaj One must worship the lotus feet of the acharya and live within the society of devotees. Then one's endeavor to cross over nations will surely be successful. Text 32 These are such important verses. Ye ye rami daksha vimukti maainas Vayasta bhava da vishuddha buddha yaha aru ya krichchene padam padam tatat putanja do nadrida yushpadangra yaha. Someone may say that aside from devotees who always seek shelter at the Lord's lotus feet, there are those who are not devotees but who have accepted different processes for attaining salvation. What happens to them? In answer to this question, Lord Brahma and the other demigods said, O lotus eyed Lord, although non devotees who accept severe austerities and penances to achieve the highest position may think themselves liberated, their intelligence is impure. They fall down from their position <coughs> of imagined superiority because they have no regard for your lotus feet. Purport. <clears throat> Aside from devotees, there are many others, non-devotees, known as karmis, jnanis, or yogis, philanthropists, altruists, politicians, impersonalists, and voidists. There are many varieties of non-devotees who have their respective ways of liberation, but simply because they do not know the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, although they falsely think that they have been liberated and elevated to the highest position, they fall down. As clearly stated by the Lord Himself in the Bhagavad Gita 9.3, Asharadana Purusha, Dharmasyasya Parantapa, Aprapyamam Nivartante, Mrityu Sangsara Bhartmani. Those who are not faithful in this devotional service, cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore they return to the path of birth and death 
in this material world. It doesn't matter whether one is a karmi, jnani, or yogi, philanthropist, politician, or whatever. If one has no love for the lotus feet of the Lord, one falls down. This is the verdict given by Lord Brahma in this verse. There are persons who advocate accepting any process and who say that whatever process one accepts will lead to the same goal. But that is refuted in this verse, where such persons are referred to as vimukta manina, signifying that although they think they have attained the highest perfection, in fact, they have not. In the present day, big, big politicians all over the world think that by scheming, they can occupy the highest political post, that of president or prime minister. But we actually see that even in this life, such big prime ministers, presidents, and other politicians, because of being non-devotees, fall down. To become president or prime minister is not easy. One must work very hard, aru yakrich trena, to achieve the post. And even though one may reach his goal, at any moment one may be kicked down by material nature. In human society there have been many instances in which great exalted politicians have fallen from government and have lo become lost in historical oblivion. <laughs> but so poetic, isn't it? So poetic. It makes it's like you can visualize the guy going <laughs> historical oblivion. <laughs> the cause of this is Abhishuddha Buddha. <coughs> Their intelligence is impure. The Shastra says, Na te vidu svarta gatim hi Vishnum, Bhagavatam 7531. One achieves the perfection of life by becoming a devotee of Vishnu. But people do not know this. Therefore, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita 12.5, Klei sho dikatadash te sham avyakta sakta chetasam. Persons who do not ultimately accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead and take to devotional service, but who instead are attached to impersonalism and voidism must undergo great labor to achieve their goals. Shriyak shritim bhakti mudas yate bibo klishan tite kavala bodha labdhyate labdhaye Bhagavatam 10.14.4 <clears throat> To achieve understanding, such persons work very hard and undergo severe austerities, but their hard labor and austerities themselves are their only achievement. But for they do not actually achieve the real goal of life. Dhruva Maharaj at first wanted to achieve the greatest material kingdom and greater material possessions than his father. But when he was actually favored by the Lord, who appeared before him to give him the benediction he desired, <coughs> Dhruva Maharaj refused it, saying, Swamin Kritartosmi Vardam Nyache. Now I am fully satisfied. I do not want any material benediction. I spent some time in India. <laughs> in India, everybody is on the horn like that. Anybody who's been lived there, everybody is on the horn like that. And therefore, when you it, it just drives you crazy. <clears throat> Unless you're Krishna conscious. This is the perfection of life. Yam labdwa chaparam labam manyate nadikam tataha. Bhagavad Gita 6.22 If one achieves the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, one is fully satisfied and does not need to ask for any material benediction. At night, no one can see a lotus 
for a lotus is blossom only during the daytime. <clears throat> Therefore the word Aravindaksha is significant. One who was not captivated by the lotus eyes or transcendental form of the Supreme Lord is in darkness, exactly like one who cannot see a lotus. One who, one who has not come to the point of seeing the lotus eyes and transcendental form of Shyamasundar is a failure. Primanjana Churi de Bhakti Bilo Chanena Sandaksa Daiva Rijayeshu Bilo Kayanti Those who are attra attached to the Supreme Personality of God in, in love always see the Lord's lotus eyes and lotus feet, whereas others cannot see the Lord's beauty and are therefore classified as Anadvita Yushman Angrayaha or neglectful of the Lord's personal form. Those who neglect the Lord's form are surely failures in every path in life. But if one develops even a little love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is liberated without difficulty. Svalpam ap yasya dharmasya trayate mahato bayat <clears throat> Therefore the Supreme Personality of Godhead recommends in the Bhagavad Gita 934 Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto Majjaji Mam Namaskuru Simply think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer some slight homage to me. Simply by this process, one is guaranteed to return home, back to Godhead, and thus attain the highest perfection. The Lord further affirms in the Bhagavad Gita, 1854 and 55, Brahma Bhutak Prasanatma Nashochati Nakangshati Samat Sarveshu Bhute Shu Mad Bhaktim Labate Param Bhaktya Mam Abhijanati Yavan Yas Chasmi Tatpataha Tato Mam Tatpato Gyatma Vishate Tadanantaram one who is thus transcendentally situated <clears throat> at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed toward every living entity. In that state he attains pure devotional service unto me. One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. Text 33. <clears throat> o Madhava, Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord of the Goddess of Fortune, if devotees completely in love with you sometimes fall from the path of devotion, they do not fall like non-devotees for you still protect them. <clears throat> Thus they fearlessly traverse the heads of their opponents and continue to progress in devotional service. PURPORT Devotees generally do not fall down, but if circumstantially they do, the Lord, because of their strong attachment to Him, gives them protection in all circumstances. Shall I read that again? Oh, all right. <clears throat> Devotees generally do, up, do not fall down, but if circumstantially they do, the Lord, because of their strong attachment to Him, gives them protection in all circumstances. Thus, even if devotees fall down, they are still strong enough to traverse the heads of their enemies. We have actually seen <clears throat> that our Krishna consciousness this movement has many opponents, such as the deprogrammers, who instituted a strong legal case against the devotees. We thought that, it, that this case would take a long time to settle, but because the devotees were protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we unexpectedly won the case in one day. This, this happened. This actually happened. <clears throat> uh, Adikeshava Maharaj was one of the main persons who was being accused. So we had to go to court. And he and Tamal Krishnamaraj got this scheme, you know. 
and they were going to dress up in the nicest suits, Brooks Brothers suits, and come across like really, you know, respectable and, you know, materialistic, well-off, you know, together persons. And they came in to see Prabhupada, and Prabhupada looked like this, he said, what are you doing? He said, you, you, you get your dunda, shave your head, wear your sannyas cloth, put your dunda, take a set of my books, and plop it right on the, de right on the, right on the desk of the yeah. judge. And you say, Judge, if you want to know who we are, read these. And that's exactly what they did. And in one day, he, 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 he gave us the judgment, favorable judgment. Wow. And, and that, that judgment is still used today in test cases <coughs> of freedom of religion. It's classic. Thus, a case that was expected con to continue for years <coughs> was settled in a day because of the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has promised in the Bhagavad Gita 931, Kauntiya Pratijani Hi Nami Bhakta Pranashi. Notice that Prabhupada doesn't put in here what he said. He was the one that told them what to do that worked. Mm -hmm. But he, he doesn't take the credit ever. Mm -hmm. You read his books carefully, he never takes the credit. Not once. He always points you to Krishna and he always reveals that Krishna is doing everything. That's the that's the secret. <clears throat> in the in history there are many instances of devotees like Chitraketu, Indra and Maharaj Bharat, who circumstantially fell down but were still protected. Maharaj Bharat, for example, because of his attachment to a deer, thought of the deer at the time of death, and therefore in his next life he became a deer. Yam yam bapi smaran bhavam, kyachajanti kalevaram. Because of protection by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, however, the deer remembered his relationship with the Lord, and next took birth in a good Brahminical family, and performed a devotional service. Shuchinam, Srimatam gehe, yoga brashto bijayate. Similarly, Chitraketu fell down and became a demon, Vritrasara, but he too was protected. Thus, even if one falls down from the path of bhakti yoga, one is ultimately saved. If a devotee is strongly situated in devotional service, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has promised to protect him. Kauntiya Pratijani hi name bhakta pranashati. But even if a devotee circumstantial falls down, he is protected by Madhava. The word Madhava is significant. Ma, Mother Lakshmi, the mother of all opulences, is always with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if a devotee is in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the opulences of the Lord are ready to help him. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatraparto denordadaha tatrasir vijayo bhutir druva nitir matir mama Bhagavad Gita 1878 <clears throat> Wherever there is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna along with his devotee Arjuna Partha there is victory, opulence, extraordinary power and morality. The opulences of a devotee are not the result of karma kanda vichara. A devotee is always protected <clears throat> by all of the Supreme Lord's opulences in which no one can deprive him, of which no one can deprive him. Tesham nitya bhijuktanam yogak chemam vaham yaham. Thus a devotee cannot be defeated by any opponents. A devotee therefore should not deviate knowingly from the path of devotion. The adherent devotee is assured all protection by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop our reading tonight there and move on to our open mic program. Anything you heard that stuck in your mind, you want to reflect on, elaborate on, 
discuss further question please be our guest well free uh, Jorge was first he raised his hand first Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna um, I was just thinking so, since we were um, talking about um, Maharaj Bharat and um, him taking birth as a deer because that's what he was thinking about at the time of death and um, we read in Bhagavad Gita that at the time of death uh, that which, which, which we think of where our mind is that's where, that's where we shall go so um, I guess my question is um, what if someone is extremely sinful but at the, end of, at the end of his life thinks of like the heavenly planets or something like this does he end up going to like hellish if the hellish planets? If someone's so sinful he doesn't think of the hellish planet, mm. heavenly planets Hmm. Hypothetical. Hypothetical. Yeah. If you if you are sinful, you won't think of the heavenly planets. Hmm. In other words, what you think of at the time of death is what you've thought of during your life. Yeah. So the idea that it's okay, I'll do whatever I want now, but at the end I'll think of Krishna and be okay. It's just pipe dream yeah. it's a house in the sky a horse egg <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you thank you for that great yes, reading Chris. Maharaj as always very enlightening um, I have a specific question regarding the um the the statement of worshiping um Krishna and worshiping Vishnu being no different i wanted to ask if that goes the same for Govinda for the other names of so the supreme personality of godhead hari as well as there's more names um and if if it is if it is the same to worship these other names Govinda Hari, um, Vishnu, is it? It's they're all different personalities, but the same personality of Godhead. Um, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. They're the same personality of Godhead. Just they're not different personalities. Okay. It's they're swangsha. Uh -huh. Swangsha means the expansion of the personality of Godhead with full potency. Ah, so. But vibhinaksha, vibhi means separated. Uh huh. We're vibhinangsha. Angsha means part. Uh -huh. Vibhi means separated. Uh -huh. So we're also uh, small parts of Krishna, but we're Fractured. separated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're, we're infinitesimal, mm -hmm. and Krishna is infinite. So just because Krishna expands into another form, he doesn't change his quality of being infinite. Perfect. And the Bhama Samhita gives the example of a candle. You light a candle, the first candle, mm -hmm. then you light another candle, another candle, and another candle. The candle power is the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. But still there's an original candle. Yes. That's Krishna. Krishna. Beautiful. In other words, people want to manufacture their definitions of God, but they don't understand the, what who God is and what God is. Therefore, their ex explanations are incomplete and impotent. Mm -hmm. Are are these names different personalities? They're the same personality in different features. Features. Just like this, a man can have different uh, mo moods in different roles that he plays mm -hmm. but same man same man thank you so krishna's moods become different forms mm -hmm. whereas our moods are just the same person making in the same mood and a different like a high court judge or policeman or politician or sports person or husband or Father. wife or you know he acts differently in all these different roles but the lord's mood is personified. Thank you. Yes, Prana. Mm. Um, I like the uh, 
purport talking about how uh, there's only Krishna who is manifest in diverse energies. Therefore, when the devotee is met with distress, they accept that this, oh, is, this, is, this was the essence Krishna, of the Krishna whole manifesting. Reading. Yes. And <coughs> um, it's just such a nice paradigm. And it's, it's really uh, exclusive to those who are the, you know, the personalist devotees because um, the impersonalists think, oh, the universe. But the universe, one can only feel so much content with some impersonal energy. So it's so nice that Krishna is a person. He's all-powerful, all-merciful, our best friend. And even in distressful conditions, we know that behind that is Krishna's um, greatest well wishes for us to come back to him. Well, practically, I mean, the statement was that everything is coming from Krishna, so that everything is none different than Krishna. Mm -hmm. So then the impersonal say, then it therefore doesn't make any difference what you worship. But practically, we see that if I, if I worship this, as God, because it's God's energy, it's not different than God, I'm going to get a different result than if I worship the Bhagavatam, or if I worship the deity in the temple, or if I worship the holy name. I get a completely different result. So this, it's just theoretical, it's just a, it's a, like a poet, poetic way of saying that, you know, respect everything as part of God, but it doesn't mean that you worship, you know, everything is God, everything and anything is God. Although if you take that one sentence out, and they do, they take one sentence out of the scriptures and they make that the whole thing that they're doing, and therefore they miss out on the complete whole. Practical. Prabhupada said, I mean, many times in lectures, public lectures, so this whole holy name of Krishna is Krishna, and it is not different than God. You want to prove it? Try. Chant any other name as many times as we chant the name of Krishna. You cannot do it. Mm. It's not possible. No one has ever done it. So bring one person who can chant Coca-Cola or whatever, Apple, or whatever their family, we went to the Apple store today, and it's like Apple, it's like, <laughs> and then in the Apple you see this some person, it's, I don't, I, don't remember, I don't know the names of any of these people anymore, but there was one big famous singer, what's her name? The most famous one now? Madonna. Huh? Madonna. Oh no, that's you. you you're in, you're a, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this no, the one that's that's the one that's now. Your your son was worshiping. Her. What's her name? Huh? Taylor Swift. No, 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 no. Come on, I went to your to your son's room and her picture was right there in the and I can't think of the name, which is a good thing. That means I'm not in the Maya. <laughs> Can't think of it. She, and, and, but <laughs> went into the, you went into the uh, app store, and they have you know all these little you know app, uh, iPhones and uh, this ones and that's and, and all have the same thing on the screen, and it was all this person's picture. <laughs> Talk about rain, re name recognition. What kind of you know, what kind of feeling would that give you? You know. But you, you can't chant her name, like yeah. we chant, huh? Beyonce. No. The room is protected. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. We're in, we're in a little bubble here, the yeah. real bubble. Yeah, can't remember. So famous, I can't remember. <coughs> here we can only remember Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Radharani, Lakshmi, Sita. Yes. I have a reflection and, and uh, two questions. So I was uh, <coughs> appreciating how you were telling the story of the court case that Srila Prabhupada completely changed the, uh, the plan that uh, they should just appear as Vaishnavas and uh, put the books, Bhagavatam, on the judge's uh, court and so that actually by the strength of the Bhagavatam they that must have really helped for them to win the, this court case in one 
for us win it in one day. So it's uh, on the strength of the authority of the books. And it's not just a fluke. Same thing happened in London when the manor was being threatened and the Queen's, Queen's Council, that's the highest <coughs> you know, authority, uh, judicial authority, they, they're the ones that take care of uh, what they call public inquiries. Mm. You know, when the public comes and then it's a public inquiry and it's all, everything comes out on the table and everybody, everybody is exposed for everything. And uh, the devotees gave him, or he decided on his own that if he's going to understand us, he had to read the Prabhupada's books. So he did. These guys are, you know, real speed readers, you know, big brains, speed readers. He read all of Bhagavad's books in a very short time. And he came out and he told us at the end, he said, you all cannot actually realize what a great personality Prabhupada was. Mm -hmm. And we were all, you know, we're, we're his disciples. What are you talking about? We're, who are you, you know? He said, I'm, <laughs> I'm 70 years old. I read what he did after he was 70 years old, and you can't appreciate it because you're still young. No one can do this, he said. And then he gave full, you know, protection. It's amazing. Jai. Um, then it was t talked about, uh, about achieving the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord in beautiful ways. And I was wondering how does one know that one has achieved the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord? I mean, Dhruva, he saw the Lord in the forest, um, but we we may not, yeah, we see the Lord in the temple. But how is that like a permanent state? Or is that like an, when you meet the Lord or when you get a special experience? Or is it just as a beginning devotee, you're doing the right you thing? You get a permanent experience. Hmm. And it said right in here, even if a devotee falls down, they can't forget. Because mm -hmm. it's a permanent experience. Once you've experienced Krishna, you never forget. And we heard yesterday or the day before, at one time, if we say sincerely, mm -hmm. sincerely, whether it be out of force of circumstances or whatever, but it's sincere, from this moment, I'm yours. And the Lord protects the person from that time on, and they can never forget. Even if they fall down, the Lord will come and protect eventually. That doesn't mean moment, you know, immediately, but it means like, that's the permanent uh, evidence. Thank you. And I was wondering, there was some names mentioned of devotees who fell down, and one of them was uh, Indrajuna. So I was trying to remember what was that that he fell down or is that something that Gajendra ah that ended you now. that ended you now. okay wait uh, Gajendra was the elephant yes it says in Bhagavatam that Gajendra was Indridumna the king oh. Indridumna before that's a different Indridumna than the yeah. one from the Jagannapuri yeah. temple okay all right thank you there is something on the cyberspace, right? Yes. So there are questions. This is from Rasa Rasika. Hari Kho Rasa Rasika. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. It was mentioned today about a devotee who accidentally falls down but is still protected by the Lord. In this case, if a devotee's fall down, is this the case if a devotee's fall down is not accidental? Do they still get the mercy of the Lord somehow? Uh, again, it's the same answer. If a, if a person is actually a devotee, this doesn't mean a devotee who's pretending to be a devotee. It means a devotee. A devotee never falls down. A devotee is one who's actually surrendered to the Lord, even for a moment. So then even if the devotee, you know, ac accidental fall down means by the strength of the material energy and by the force of a bad habit. They do something wrong. 
non-devotional. They become forgiven very easily. But even if a person intentionally does something, shall I read the purport? Does anybody object? No objection? Okay. No objection certificate I got just now from the devotees. Here it is. 9.31 purport. Ready? He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Purport. This should not be misunderstood. <clears throat> in the seventh chapter, the Lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. One who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualifications whatsoever. The question remains then, how can a person engaged in abominable activities either by accident or by intention be a pure devotee? This question may be justly raised. <clears throat> the miscreants, as stated in the seventh chapter, who never come to the devotional service of the Lord, have no good qualifications. As is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, generally a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart. He puts the Supreme Personality of Godhead within his heart and all sinful contaminations are naturally washed away. Continuous thinking of the Supreme Lord makes him pure by nature. According to the Vedas, <clears throat> there is a certain regulation that if one falls down from his exalted position, he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself. But here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee. Due to his remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead constantly, this doesn't necessarily mean 24 hours a day. It means every day, at some point, regularly. Even devotees who have fallen, they regularly remember the Lord. That's a fact. Therefore, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should con be continued without stoppage. This will protect the devotee from all accidental fall downs. He will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations. So the key word of that in that purport is or by intention. Accident or by intention. You know, because Prabhupada just the example, say for instance, you had the habit of smoking before, and then you become a devotee and you give it up. And somehow, whether you get with all your old friends and they're, you know, they're, you're in a situation where they're all saying, oh, come on, it's okay, just for old time, here, take a little... And you do. Well, in order to do that, you have to voluntarily, willfully go, you know, when you smoke. So that, you can say that's intentional. But it's for a different reason than uh, ill motivation. That's it? Yes, Kalindi, please tell us. Stress is like a negative way of, of the Lord to, to bring purification? Yes. So? The devotee sees distress mm -hmm. as sent by the Lord to teach not to not have to not like the material world mm -hmm. that's how a devotee sees distress sees negativity sees seemingly inauspicious things uh -huh. so a devotee sees everything being sent by Krishna mm -hmm. because okay. if it wasn't cr created like that then we could actually think we we could be happy here forever, which is not possible. So the the misery is in the 
you know, things in the material world that aren't so nice are here for that reason. It doesn't have to be like that. If you, if you stay devotee, you don't, you don't feel the distress. But the material world is certified by Krishna, Dukalayam, Ashasutam. It's miserable and it's temporary. Anitya Ashukam. Anitya, temporary, and Ashukam, miserable. If one remembers Krishna all the time, then it is not like that. Say that again. If one remembers Krishna all the time, then, then we don't experience that misery. Actually. Yes. Yeah. But, but that's the point. It, it, that doesn't mean you don't see it. You don't, you don't, it doesn't mean you don't get sick. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you don't but you, you see it differently a devotee mm -hmm. sees it differently mm -hmm. sees through a different lens sees through the lens of this is sent to me by Krishna to teach me something so that I will want to go back to him to increase my desire to go back to him mm -hmm. okay. Hare Krishna <laughs> Okay, we'll stop here and uh, start the day off tomorrow morning and try to conserve my voice. I've been doing good at conserving my voice, speaking less loud and less during the day, so I will continue. We, you please bless me. We've done more than 20 pages the last three, three days in a row, and we're on a roll. So, yes, Hare Krishna, help us publish this book, these books in sound. It's far out thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's far out thought. First time these books are going to be published fully in sound. Sorry. Hare Krishna. All right. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. jai. Prayers of the demigods to the Lord in the womb ki jai. jai. Mother Devaki ki jai. Gaur Prem Manandi. Hari Hari Bo. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Uh, same time. I think so. Six what? Saturday. Oh, Saturday, 4.30. Yeah, sorry, made a mistake. Tomorrow's Saturday, 4.30. See you then. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.